forget and let God bless you abundantly. Praise the Lord. If you have your Bibles, I want you to turn to the book of 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 2. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Also, just want to make a quick announcement. I am working on um, our Christmas program for the children. So it's getting that close to that time where I'll be sending out some CDs. It's a real simple, I always try to keep it simple because I know... Um, lives, you know, get hectic at Christmas and people are busy. So it's a very simple program and um, I just want everyone to be encouraged. Parents, um, encourage your children. I want them to be involved in this Christmas program this year. It's just basically narration and some songs that we're going to sing. But it, it's um, uh, called Jesus Means Christmas to Me. So... Keep that in mind, and I truly believe God's going to bless our kids. And I encourage you, don't give up on them. I know some of them are getting older. They might say, well, I don't want to go to church, but you know what? It's our responsibility and our duty to make sure that they are here in the house of the Lord. God will um, be more able to touch their lives if they're here than if they're not. Amen. Amen. So I'm thankful that you take the time to bring your children to church and to have a place for them, even grandkids, whatever. Um, we want anyone that wants to be a part of our Christmas program, we'll, we'll give them a spot in, in there, so we don't want to leave anyone out. 2 Corinthians chapter 2. I'm going to start at verse 11, and then I'm going to move down, skip 12 and 13, and move down to 14 and 15. So let's start at verse 11. It says, Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Now thanks be to God, verse 14, now thanks be unto God, which also causeth us to triumph in Christ, and maketh manifest the Savior of his knowledge by us in every place. For we are unto God a sweet savor of Christ in them that are saved and in them that are that perish. Praise the Lord. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you. We praise you, Jesus, for your Holy Spirit divine that is here today. We are thankful, Lord, for your love and your mercy, God. And, Lord, your Holy Spirit that draws us into the house of the Lord. I just pray that you would have your way these next few moments. And, Lord, let the Holy Spirit come down and convict us. We need the conviction of the Holy Spirit in our lives because it will draw out the junk that needs to be taken out of our lives so that your glory and power can come in and rest in us. Lord, I pray that you would have your way. And Lord, I pray that the devil would not uh, take the word from us today, but God, it will be rooted and grounded in our faith in you. And Lord, we will grow, Lord, mighty and strong in our faith, God. Lord, lift us up today and encourage us in the way of the Lord, I pray. Hide me behind the cross because I know I am nothing without you and your anointing. Lord, and we ask this in Jesus' name. And everyone said... Amen. I was reading in the scriptures and a lot of this uh, chapter here talks about uh, a spirit of unforgiveness and uh, having a spirit of unforgiveness and, and, and carrying that on in our lives. But then Paul, uh, Paul talks in this scripture about lest Satan get an advantage on us. I want you to know we better be alert to the enemy and the schemes that he has. Uh, but we've got to be alert and have the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives uh, and the word of the Lord which will speak to us and which will make us aware of the schemes that the devil has laid out for us. Right. Amen. Amen. You're quiet.
quiet this morning. Are you awake? Maybe it's too hot in here. Is it too hot? Is anyone too hot? Praise the Lord. Amen. We don't want no one going to sleep. Amen. Praise God. But we want the power of His Spirit to come down fresh and anew in our lives. And the only way is if we know the Word. Paul wanted to get it across to the church. This is the church that he was speaking. He wasn't talking to the world because I want you to know the devil already has the world out there buffaloed and he has them deceived. But we as the church have to be alert so that the devil doesn't get an advantage on on us. Amen. Oh dear God, help us to be awakened, to be stirred in our spirit uh, and to be alert uh, as it says in the word of God the devil, he roars like a roaring lion seeking who he may devour. I want you to know the devil is coming against the church and the body of Christ and we've got to be on top of things. Yeah. We can't be taking the easy way out, but we've got to see that God is calling a church to rise up and to take a stand against the devil and to say, devil, I'm not giving you any foothold in my life, but I'm going to have the power of God and the power of the Holy Spirit operating in my life every day. Amen. Hallelujah. What does it say? Jesus said it. I always say this, this is my testimony. I've, I've shared it before, but it's a powerful scripture that we need to remember that Jesus said in John 10.10, 10, The thief cometh but not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. That's his, his whole operation in life uh, for you. He is out to steal from you. He is out to kill you. And the main thing that he wants to do in your life is to destroy you. Amen. You've got to be aware. You've got to uh, come in contact uh, with the power of God. And that's only through His Spirit and through His Word. That's what we were talking about in Sunday school. A lot of people don't know about the devil because they've never read the Word of God. They've never found out what it says. But Jesus said, don't be taken unaware. Keep your eyes ears open in tune to the word of the Lord so that the devil will not get an advantage on you. Amen. I can remember at times, you know, we would always say, we want the front seat. There's a lot of times where we never got as a kid. How many of you remember, you know, they'd say shotgun. I get shotgun. I want to sit up front. I want to be up there where everything's happening, where I can see where I'm going and what's going on. We need to be like that in our spiritual walk with the Lord. We don't need to be taking a back seat and let the devil drive. We need to let the Lord in the driver's seat and we need to tell the devil to get behind us. Amen. Hallelujah. That's what Jesus said. He was led into the wilderness, tempted of the devil. See, that's what we've got to remember. The devil comes to tempt. The devil comes to destroy. He comes with his lies. What Jesus said, he said he's the father of all lies. He's the one that started this thing and He's continually spewing out lies to the church and the body of Christ. But I want you to get your cotton ball ready and I want you to plug up your ears to the lies of the devil and let the light and the glory and the power of the Holy Spirit penetrate into your heart so that you won't even hear the lies that He has coming your way. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to be like Jesus where, you know, at the very, the very end of the tempting of Jesus, what did Jesus say? You know, I'll give you all these things. I'll give you everything. All these things that you see, 
All you got to do is just bow down and worship me. Isn't it something from today and from this point on, the devil has always been trying to take the glory from the Lord. Amen. He's always been trying to take the glory. But we uh, need to be like Jesus. What did Jesus say? He looked at Satan and he said, Get thee hence, Satan. For it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord God, and Him only shalt thou serve. Hallelujah. He is a faithful Lord. He is a righteous God. And we will serve only Him. Hallelujah. I know there's a lot of things that come our way. And we allow the tempter and we allow the enemy. You know, the only way that the devil is going to have access to your life is if you allow him. Amen? Amen. You got to allow him. You make choices from day to day. You make decisions in your life whether you are going to follow in righteousness and you are going to follow in holiness or you make little steps that keep you from serving the Lord and you allow the enemy to come in. There's one thing, I don't want to give a foothold to the devil because I want you to know, you give the devil an inch and he'll take a mile. You can't let the enemy come in into your life and that goes with every kind of thing in our lives. You know, I was just sharing the other day with someone. I want to stand on the Word of God. Does that mean that times of trouble can't come my way? Does that mean that things could come my way that, that could be, you know, uh, anything? We all could be faced with things because we know that it rains on the just and the unjust. But no matter what, I want to stand on thus saith the Lord. I don't want to stand on the report on the news. I don't want to put my faith in what man says. But I want to put my faith and my hope in my God and His Word because I know that His Word is able to keep me through. We've got to be in tune. We've got to be equipped. You know, we've got to know. We've got weapons. We've got things that we can use. Spiritual warfare. We can use spiritual things in our lives that bring the devil down in our lives. But when we take the easy way and we take the easy road, we will find ourselves in trouble. Yeah. Dear God. I want to keep uh, the devil behind me and under my feet. I looked Amen. up the word where it says when Jesus said, get thee hence. It not only means to be behind, but to be under. I don't want any report or, or anything that comes from man or from the enemy in my life, but I want the power of His Spirit uh, and the glory of His presence uh, shining forth in your life and in my life because when we shine bright, others will see it and they will run to the light. Hallelujah. Amen? Amen. Amen. We were talking in Sunday school about where it said that Jesus was talking to Peter and, and, and He said, the, the, the devil, it said here that Satan, he looked at Peter and he said, Satan had desired to have you so that he could sift you as wheat. I truly believe we've got to realize, as I've said before, the only way that the devil can come in is when we open the door to him. Amen. It is in our decision because it says that he asked to have Him. But hallelujah, we have the blood and the power of Jesus in our lives. And we have what He has done on the cross. And we have His power flowing through our lives so that we can tell the devil, you have no access in my life. Amen. I want to give God the glory and the praise just as 
Paul did because there was many things coming against the church. I mean, if we could go back and just live out these chapters, it would be a whole lot different than our, you know, what we're facing from day to day. From day to day, they were facing persecution. They were facing all kinds of tribulations and sufferings. And I know that we do have sufferings down here, but we've got to realize that God is our source. In a world driven uh, to all kinds of things, uh, driven to do all kinds of things and to get caught up, we've got to keep our eyes focused on God. Amen. And like I said before, as Paul said in verse 14, now thanks, he starts out and he says, but now thanks be unto God. If there's one thing I want to get in your mind and to focus on for you is that God be thanked. Hallelujah. We've got to keep our thoughts and we've got to keep our minds. I was just saying the other day, Lord, I don't want to lose my time where I just put on some songs of worship and I just begin to praise you. A lot of times we just come in and we're, we're just shouting all of our needs out and we're, we're asking God to do this and to do that. But we've got to come with a thankful heart. We've got to come with thanksgiving and praise on our lips. Hallelujah. We've got to give Him the glory that is due His name. I, I was moved by the, the video I saw the other day. It was like a little report. And they had the surveillance from the from the, the store, the lady had her own little, you know, small business. She had a store and they had it there on video. Uh, the surveillance, here comes a guy in, in black and he's got a gun and he's pointing it. There was also a, a lady behind the counter and then a lady that she was waiting on. And he just comes and approaches them with that gun and he's telling them, I guess, that he wants their money. He's robbing the place. And all of a sudden, that woman behind the counter, she was a Christian. And she got a holy boldness. Now, I'm not telling you to do this, but she was led, and I truly believe of the Lord, because that would be the only reason that you would do such a thing. She looked at him and she said, In the name of Jesus, I want you to leave my store right now. She told her story. She felt the power of God come down on her with authority that she told that man to leave the store. And you know, it wasn't like, you know, right away he turned around and left. He kept pointing the gun and, and pointing it at the uh, at the, uh, the, the customer till finally she said it again. And she said it by the power of the Holy Spirit. I command you to leave in the name of Jesus. And that man finally just turned around and he came right out of the store. Hallelujah. Amen. I want you to know there's power in the name of Amen. Jesus. Amen. If anything, it is an illustration for us that when we come to him in faith, when we lay it down, when we give God our praise, and we come to him in the name of Jesus, he is able to do mighty things for us. And that's what I want to say. Even though that there are things, you know, I know it, it's it's a warfare going on. There's things going on that I see that I don't like, but then I see a lot of things that I do like. And I know that God is on the move. And even when I don't see it, I know that He's still moving. Hallelujah. I know that He's still moving. Why? Because first of all, the Word of God tells me so. And that's what I bank on today. I don't walk uh, this thing out by what I see. I walk it by faith in Jesus Christ, my Lord. But we've got to be alert. We don't want to give no place to the devil. Amen? We don't want to give no place to his schemes because we've got to remember one thing as James declared it in the Scriptures, every man is tempted and when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed, then when lust has conceived, it bringeth forth sin and when 
when sin is finished, it bringeth forth death. We've got to remember that the devil comes when we find ourselves away from the Word of the Lord. When we say, oh, I, I, I just miss. I was listening to a man that found himself away from the Lord and he backslid. And he found himself little by little. You know, I remember Dad saying, you miss one service, you'll miss two. You miss two, you'll miss three. And isn't that the way it goes? Amen. That's why we've got to be on top. And we've got to say, no devil, I'm staying in the front seat. I'm going to let Jesus drive me. I'm going to let Him lead me in this life. Because I'm going to lift my hands. And I'm going to give Him the praise. And I want the glory and the power of His Spirit operating in my life every day. Thank you, Lord. And when we do that, just as we do today, the Word of God is going forth. I want you to know, as it says in this Scripture in verse 15, it is a sweet smelling savor unto the Lord. Yes, that's right. It goes up to the nostrils of God and He takes it in when He sees us acting out our faith in Him. When we say, hey, I'm getting up and I'm going to the house of God. I'm going to spend some time in His Word news with someone today. Yes. You know, it made me think comical times when we're at daycare. You know, now I know it's one thing. I, I changed plenty of diapers on my own, on Matthias. But, um, but it's a whole different thing, you know, at daycare. You'll be walking around and all of a sudden you get this swift. <laughs> it's not good. And you're like, who is it? And where is it at? Dear God, it made me think, Lord, do you ever get that smell that you don't like? Dear God, I don't want any kind of raunch smell coming up into the nostrils of God when it comes to my spiritual walk with God. But I want that sweet smelling Savior, hallelujah, to be in my life, hallelujah. I want the glory of His presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. And most of all, I want it going out from this church and into our lives and into our homes and into our neighborhoods and in our communities and into our children that God will be praised and that He will be lifted up high. Hallelujah. 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 Let's not believe the lie of the enemy. Let's not just focus on what we see but let's Look unto God. Hallelujah. Let's thank Him for the things that He has done. For His Hallelujah. unspeakable gifts unto God. All the things that He has done for us. He has done great things Hallelujah. for us. Amen. And because we are overcomers in Christ and we triumph as He said in this Scripture because of Jesus and because what God has done, we will triumph. Triumph. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We will be that army. We will be that victorious army in the Lord, giving thanks and praise to our God. Can we stand in the house of the Lord?